Hi, this is Critical Discussions, episode 10. And um, today we're going to be talking about basically two things. Death of um, Queen Elizabeth II and about counteroffensive in Ukraine. So let's just start with the, the death of the Queen. And um, I don't know, it's kind of a weird thing, right? I, even being like from Belarus, I always felt like queen is kind of a i don't know she felt like a almost like a grandma to the whole world in a sense like didn't matter really what what was happening in this country or that country um what kind of wars were fought were what kind of um i don't know new things were were being invented uh new tragedies happened new whatever uh but sort of one constant was the queen of um um of England and um UK all the rest of the things uh Commonwealth so on and so forth and um yeah it it's kind of weird I remember like seeing the news uh, like the Queen is dead I'm like what can't be then I checked it and it's like wow it almost feels like she I don't know I mean I don't know what kind of a person who um she was like how exactly uh was she um Apparently, she made quite racist sort of um, quite racist sort of things. Um, it's not even about it. And and by the way, like I despise monarchy. I think this is uh, absolute. Not, I don't despise it. I think it's just uh, something that shouldn't exist in twenty twenty two, not in the modern world whatsoever. The whole concept is uh, of being able to be born into like ruling freaking countries or i mean i understand that it's it's not what's happening anymore and the uh, actual uh, royals don't really have that much power but um if if at all it's more of a sort of show just the facade basically but something it, there was some class about it i guess there is some class there was some class about this particular lady uh, the fact that I don't know if you see her basically anywhere, meeting people, greeting people. It's always like with a smile, so on and so forth. Like I'm saying, I don't know what kind of a person she was behind the scenes, but <laughs> I've also seen this little statistics that apparently, um, more than ninety percent of people who are currently alive on planet Earth were born when the Queen was already Queen. Not when she was born. Not since that. Like, ninety more than ninety percent of people. Apparently, I didn't check the exact math, but something like that. Just thinking about it is already insane. Were born when she was already queen. So basically, like what nineteen fifty? Yeah, from nineteen fifty two. Which kind of makes sense. From nineteen fifty two, seventy years. Um, she's been, uh, she's been queen basically. Uh. And so, yeah, kind of, there are not that many people who are over the age of, like, 70-something. So, kind of, probably makes sense, but it's just incredible to even think about it, that more than 90% of people alive today have been, like, uh, um, w were born when she was already a queen. So, yeah, that's, um, it's kind of, I don't know, she kind of felt like this grandma like i said to the at least to me it felt a bit the grandma for planet earth in a sense and uh, like your grandma uh, like anybody uh, else's grandma probably they can be quite uh, racist quite sometimes saying very um stupid shit uh, very not gonna in line with modern world kind of things but you know that's that's what you have that's what you have to deal with if you know you have grandmas whatever um yeah once again, I do not like the the whole um, royalty things whatsoever. It's one thing when you've built some business um, and you're like you created some products, uh, you became became uh, wealthy, whatever, and you have children who will inherit it, so on and so forth. That's one thing, but just being born into like ruling freaking countries and other people like this is this is just uh, obscene. This is stupid. Um, don't know how. Um, how it's still a thing in 2022 but yeah and also dude oh my god i went uh onto 
Irish Twitter. Just just put like uh, Queen um, Ireland in Twitter, and oh my God, people celebrating her death. Like I understand that there there were a lot of like Britain as an empire. Um, like there are, there are a lot of shady things in the past, as probably any empire uh, would have. But come on, can you just at least like mourn a person? At least like you you don't want to mourn it like Don, but like ridiculing the death of a person. I don't get it. I really don't get it. It's kind of, I don't know. You 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 need to kind of, at least in my view, you need to sort of have at least some decency to not bring up every little shit um, from the past when the person just died. Like, do it in a week or two. Like, holy shit. Like, I don't know. Just my little thought. Um, I actually like the picture that um, Apple put on, on their website. In memoriam of uh, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth uh, II, um, I feel like it's a really nice kind of picture. Although, um, I don't know, <laughs> to me, kind of looked like because we, I'm assuming because uh, there's been like a um, it, it's a photo scan probably from like a film, um, a sto- not probably definitely. Uh, there were like little things that look like, I don't know, like she, as if she's crying or something. <laughs> I don't know, kind of, but very nice, very nice picture, nonetheless. Um, so yeah, rest in peace, I guess, um, the queen. And uh, it's kind of weird also that this kind of a era basically ended. And it's interesting to see sort of what what will what will happen next. And it, it comes at a time when, once again, such a giant thing is happening in the, in the um in ukraine between russia and ukraine obviously the, the whole war and now the death of the queen previous years that there was uh, um whole whole pandemic thing it's just it feels like this simulation whoever is running it is just cranking cranking the amount of like fucked up events up to whatever 100 or something like that really weird really weird and yeah if anything i would appreciate if like feeling things would be dialed down a little bit i feel like we've had enough of really tragic and and terrible things would be good to actually i don't know switch the switch the narrative a little bit and maybe you know maybe maybe dial like new innovations like progress in whatever like biomedicine freaking curing um aging cancer those kind of stuff that would be better rather than distraction deaths and all of this kind of stuff i don't know just just little to sense i guess okay rest in peace queen and now um let's let's talk about now let's talk about um ukrainian counteroffensive operation oh no wait 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 before we did this um <laughs> one little funny thing um bbc posted an article queen's f- uh, funeral guests who will and who will not attend <laughs> and um, European royal families, U.S. presidents, Commonwealth leaders, other world leaders will attend, and there's pictures of of certain <laughs> of certain people. And then who will not attend? Putin. <laughs> just this picture is just so like beautiful. <laughs> um, no one from Russia, Belarus, and Myanmar has been invited. Same as uh, Syria, Venezuela, Afghanistan. Amazing. North Korea, Nicaragua. Um, oh, North Korea and Nicaragua have been invited to send only ambassadors, not heads of state. I wonder why, especially North Korea. Um, <laughs> but it's just such a such a beautiful picture. Like the world leaders, blah, 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 everything. And then who will not attend? Putin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Kind of a, kind of a thing. Um yeah, and apparently um, the ceremony was um, today. I'm recording this on uh, 4th, 14th of um, September, 2022, and apparently the ceremony was um, today. I actually, I've actually seen the the uh, uh, coffin procession in where 
in Scotland yes yesterday or the day before I watched the video yesterday and um, yeah today the ceremony was in, in London I'm assuming in Westminster Hall yeah okay once again rest in peace Queen Okay, so Ukrainian counteroffensive operation. Um, I didn't really talk about it before, um, but it's been ongoing basically for like a week and a half, two weeks. But very big advancements uh, were made in Kharkiv region, and um, basically Russian forces were almost completely uh, thrown out of Kharkiv region. And I feel like maybe today already all of uh, Kharkiv region was uh, deoccupied. But just looking at the map, difference between 6th of September, when Russian forces were in Izum, in Kupyansk, in many, 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 obviously, other um, cities in Ukraine, and looking at this uh, Institute, of, uh, Institute for the Study of War maps, um, the difference between 6th September and 12th September, and today is 14th, so it's even more, um, the fact that the fact that uh, Zelensky himself actually visited the Zoom, uh, just uh, I think I think yesterday. Um, not sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna check it. Um, but it's it's beautiful. Just the fact that uh, Ukraine. <laughs> I mean, just the fact that Ukraine was able to deoccupy the territory right now. Uh, they're saying uh, six thousand square meters. Six. Uh, and six wait what six thousand six thousand square kilometers of course why did i say meters that's just brain dead oh my god <laughs> losing my brain cells uh six thousand square kilometers um it's been deoccupied and uh, i've checked um today and apparently it's even more now um uh, eighty five hundred so eight thousand uh 500 square kilometers has been um, retaken basically um, by now already. It is incredible. And Russian forces are simply uh, running away. They're not even fighting. and Well, they do fight, but not um, not, not a lot really. Um, and so it's, it's beautiful to see this change uh, of scenery, even, even channels. Who are talking um, about the war and like bringing news and, and all the information on um, basically on a daily basis, like uh, Mark Scott's channel, uh, Michael Naki channel. They're in, they're in Russian, um, so so there's that. But uh, you can see actually people for the first time uh, since 24th of February, um, people for the first time are basically smiling. They see. Like you can see happiness on on faces of these are Russian citizens, but obviously they are in opposition to the current regime in in Russia, and so seeing how Russian uh, army is just running away, just running away, not even looking back um, from the territory of Ukraine, from these regions at least, is is just beautiful to see it. And those uh, all of those uh, people who are really public people. Um, who are making videos like I'm saying uh, every day about these uh, these events, uh, they are also <laughs> basically full of joy and happiness, which is incredible. And just seeing how much how much uh, Ukraine has done in just just like a couple of weeks, it's incredible. It is truly incredible. Like obviously the war is far from over. This is just one region, but. Um, and, and obviously it will not stop uh, Russia to um, airstrike um, just civilian infrastructure, just regular uh, Ukrainian cities, so on and so forth. This will not stop, unfortunately. And this, in fact, this is exactly what's happened. Um, this is exactly what's happened, that um, as uh, Ukrainian forces were liberating the whole region of Kharkiv, uh, Kharkiv region, um, Russia just... Uh, indiscriminately just uh, launched a few rockets on uh, bigger uh, big cities and I, I'm not sure if they killed anybody but for sure like um, just damaged infrastructure damaged um, power plant um, I remember it happened 
um so they they're just doing the same thing that uh, they they've been doing before basically um yeah basically just being terrorist state actually and uh, actually doing exactly what uh, terrorists would do to instill terror in um uh, in people in in regular civilians but you know what like it's not going to work this this tactic will not going to work because now now that um, ukraine has actually uh, started this um, counteroffensive operation and has been very very successful with it um i'm pretty certain that not only it will boost morale in uh, ukrainian army but it will definitely boost morale in just um, just people in ukraine and also in people who are right now living in occupied territories because they they will um they will see this these advancements um uh, of of ukraine and they will understand that no like no matter how long it will take ukraine ukrainian army ukrainian armed forces will liberate and free all the territory crimea uh included i'm pretty sure in fact uh in fact very interestingly um very interestingly um ukraine claims crimea blasts responsibility now they are actually saying this like now that this counteroffensive operation has been going and it's, it's been going great um they or actually I- even when it was because it's the f- from 6 days ago i just uh, seen it like today or yesterday um that um, those um those attacks on like Saki airfield in crimea uh, and i think like was it i think there was something else as well in crimea um they're actually saying that yeah we did this before they were like oh, i don't know you know like they they were playing the same game before that russia is doing um we don't know it's not us you know all this like uh, denying uh, basically everything and uh, they were doing fine I, I was i'm pretty sure i was uh, talking about it in like some uh, prior episode uh, and i was laughing my ass off because uh, ukraine owned russia with this like oh we don't know it's not us you must have i don't know somebody from your um, telling this sort of to to russians to russian army and to russian officials whatever the fuck um they they basically said that you know maybe somebody smoked i don't know you you have a lot of smokers this this things uh, tend to happen uh, if you know somebody uh you know smoked in the wrong place but now they're actually claiming that yeah they actually did this and they've done it uh, because people were thinking and and speculating how exactly they've done it was there sort of some uh, some sort of a diversion group that uh, sort of um, entered the territory of Crimea and maybe like launched some drones or something like that kamikaze drones something like that Uh, there were a lot of speculation but apparently um, apparently um apparently i feel like i feel like i've I've seen somebody said that it was actual uh rockets that um that uh, ukraine has used so i think am i am i tripping i feel like i feel like i was either watching a video or or actually Was it either a video or or some article? I'm pretty sure. Um, unfortunately, can't find it right now at this moment. But basically, uh, Ukrainian officials, I think this they said that it was uh, it was rockets, um, which which kind of would explain a lot. Um, yeah, especially if it's like a sort of hypersonic rockets, because obviously it's almost impossible to um, to do anything about it. And um, perhaps I think yeah I'm pretty sure I've seen it in the in the video. This this guy the discussion uh, was about a potential use of this hypersonic um, rockets and um, free t- the not like really really hypersonic but uh, three three times more than the um, speed of sound I think uh, the conversation was and um, basically you wouldn't find much of a much of anything of that rocket after it uh, it exploded there uh, but apparently this this is how they've done it by hyp- some some kind of a hypersonic missiles and then obviously the detonation started um all this like ch- uh, chain de- detonations 
because Russians are just were storing a lot of this ammunition right next to the planes, and so uh, in in that attack, um, uh, Ukraine um, basically damaged or completely destroyed uh, up to ten um, airplanes, Russian fighter jets, which was amazing. And listen, it wasn't it was not uh, that long time ago when we were thinking everybody uh, was thinking that holy fuck, this is so incredible. This is like uh, one of the one of the best sorts of operation that Ukraine has done so far in this war, and uh, right now we're seeing that uh, that Ukraine <laughs> literally deoccupied the whole region, and uh, it's is once again it's incredible to see, and uh, obviously they will not stop. But this is exactly I mean, this is so interesting. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not it's nothing that special, but I was. Uh, if you go back to like my uh, first or second video um, that I've done, the, the episode one or two, in, in somewhere there at, at the very beginning, I was actually looking at, at those maps um, and and just saying, like, why don't like Ukraine start their counter-offensive operation and squeeze Russian forces basically um, near borders uh, where where there is a uh, Ukrainian territory sort of behind them and whatever to the north of them why don't they squeeze slightly like Kharkiv region and sort of push Russians to the to their own territory why don't do the same in Kherson region and um uh, you know what it kind of <laughs> i mean i'm no expert by any means but it kind of gave me this what's going on right now it kind of gave me this little affirmation that uh, i kind of understand at least something um about uh, sort of the tactics and strategy um, that because this is exactly what's 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 going on. Like Ukraine doesn't go into into fence in some uh, somewhere like in uh, for example like in Mariupol right now or in Militopol in or like goes directly to like Kramatorsk and Bal Donetsk whatever. Uh, they're actually squeezing the for Russian forces exactly <laughs> like I've said. Like why don't they do this? And they're doing exactly that. They're squeezing. And clearing the front uh, on uh, in the east in the Kharkiv region, and they're doing the same in Donetsk region, or well, not Donetsk, sorry, in Kherson region. Uh, although, because there are way more um, Russian forces in Kherson, um, it's been going um, a bit slower, and at the same time, it is still going pretty well. Um, especially thinking about. Um, the fact that Russia has not advanced basically at all uh, hasn't advanced at all basically since about June I would say maybe even May they didn't really advance much like for three months they didn't do nothing really um, and seeing how much of the advancements have been made by Ukraine already, like I'm saying, in, in especially in the prior week, but just like in two weeks, in the end of August, in September, this is incredible. This it is truly incredible, um, and and uh, I'm I'm relatively certain that Kherson and Novokhovka, all these uh, um, important cities in Kherson region in the south of Ukraine, will be deoccupied relatively soon i i've heard from analysts um, that uh, and just in general i think uh, ukrainian sort of um, officials also sort of just say it themselves that they've taken slightly slight um pause right now to regroup because um uh, and, and to kind of give their own forces uh some time to rest because uh, apparently for like six straight days yeah, Ukraine was deoccupying Kharkiv region, and they're just they were like literally going at a pace, at the basically maximum pace that the vehicles, um, the vehicle, the armored, um, armored vehicles um, actually were capable of, pretty much, and which is incredible once again, and uh, almost no resistance uh, they've encountered in Kharkiv region, and then it's this is like to my point, uh, I wanted to make that. It is one thing uh, when Russians are coming into the territory of Ukraine, invading the territory of Ukraine. Uh, they are armed and they are basically going against unarmed civilians. This is one thing. And uh, you could feel like, uh, oh my God, you're so amazing. You fucking captured a shit ton of Ukrainian land. 
once again coming there um, and basically fighting civilians or not even fighting because they wouldn't fight really it's n- nothing to fight with and this is a completely different thing completely different thing when actual army of Ukraine reaches your positions and starts their own counter-offensive operation, counter-attack. Because now you have to deal with people who are armed, who are really well-equipped, and uh, who understand what they're doing, who have who has a plan um, of this counter-offensive operation. And uh, now there's th- there are people firing at you. It's it's not the same as as coming to Bucha and actually murdering civilians and torture people and rape women and so on and so forth. This is not the same anymore. And uh, all it took is like <laughs> there, once again there was a joke somebody made that all it took uh, was basically like the whole mighty Russian army was destroyed by like fourteen high Mars systems, <laughs> which is kind of a I mean not to denigrate any other support or bravery of actual Ukrainian um, army, but army people, personnel. But there is, there's a lot to be said about really good um, modern weapons because uh, Ukraine, for several uh, weeks before that, has been trying, and successfully trying, not trying, has been destroying um, all sorts of stashes of... Uh, um, supplies of of basically um, rockets, of ammunition, of all things like that, Russian ammunition, obviously, um, on the territory of Ukraine before they've started counteroffensive operation. And so by the time they've done the operation, the, the counteroffense, uh, by, the, by the time they've started it, um, I'm pretty sure Russians were already, uh, Russian oc- occupants were already thinking like, what in the fuck are we doing here? They're literally striking like behind our backs. Um, they're destroying our um, ammo depots, and we don't have like a lot of things to fight with. And listen, if you go to like YouTube channels, um, YouTube and and find uh, find uh, uh, basically intercepted calls from Russians who are fighting uh, against Ukraine right now, you will see and hear a lot of like panic. A lot of panic and a lot of absolute dog shit um, or basically non-existent organization in the army. Basically, they they don't even like nobody really regroups them. Like Russia on the news for the Russian, I don't know, fucking men, fifty or and women, fifty, sixty years old, whatever, uh, claims that oh no, we're leaving this territory, we're regrouping, we're strengthening uh, our basically army in like Donbass and whatever region uh, and uh, in Kherson region we're doing this like gesture of goodwill or some shit like that which is absolutely fucking insane um but um yeah this is uh, in reality like the the people on the ground there there's russian people on the ground they're saying russian soldiers on the ground are saying that uh, the the generals the fucking lieutenants whatever uh they they don't do anything really they're just fucking pieces of shit they're just running they're not even like ordering us to uh leave our positions and if if they do order it like they don't really provide like ne- necessary necessarily um they don't provide time <laughs> first of all because they do it like basically okay we're leaving and you're leaving right now they don't have uh cars with cars trucks whatever that would help them um, to actually evacuate the personnel so they're basically being left alone there and people apparently as f- as far as i've heard were running from izum on foot basically uh, to to reach some other territories that are controlled um by by russia um but uh, yeah this is uh, absolutely incredible once again in terms of um, in terms of the fact how much of territory ukraine was able to uh, to regain in just a couple weeks in a week even um, it's incredible so once again i'm relatively certain that uh, they are taking slight pause um right now they are getting sort of ready for the next um, operation for the next phase of operation interesting 
also very very interesting that uh, from september 7 to september 10 uh russian military like ukraine battle map posted this little um f- joke which is a joke but not a really a joke it's the truth um russian military aid to ukraine well soldiers doesn't matter prisoners 457 main battle tanks um almost 1400 armored combat vehicles 54 artillery pieces with ammo 20 air defense system and 11 special equipment whatever the fuck that means um but yeah right now russia is becoming one of the biggest sponsors for ukrainian army (laughs) by actually just leaving uh, whatever equipment they have and just running away which is once again um, pretty crazy um, pretty insane to to think about it and um and i'm pretty sure um in, uh, ukrainian army right now will continue in Kherson region but once again the the amount of pe- of people of russian soldiers there is way higher than it was in, in apparently in the um, kharkiv region at the same time if ukraine can um, basically create at least like um visibility that they can do it uh, to basically create some sort of a little flank in Kherson region between Kherson and Melitopol to show Russians that they could be surrounded by Ukraine by Ukrainian forces that might force them to actually retreat Russians there is to uh, retreat way faster and once again like leave basically positions without fighting much at all or or at, uh, uh, at all because and it's you can actually hear uh, exactly this in those recordings in those intercepted recordings that this is exactly what some russians are thinking some russian soldiers on the positions on the ground are thinking like nobody else covers us no there's no support for us so if we're gonna get flanked if we're gonna get surrounded uh we're done basically either we're gonna be either we will end up dead or we will end up captured uh, which is obviously captured is a little bit better option um but yeah this is the this is the reality basically that uh, russian soldiers have to leave right now soldiers i don't want they're not soldiers russian occupants um in the word soldier there's some um at least in my view like ukraine has soldiers russian has uh, russia has occupants uh there's some class in the word soldier you know like some some decency at least in my view there should be some decency in that word and there is no no decency in this whole war that russia started and uh, it's just it's just despicable really if you think about it But yeah, basically, f- uh, as of September 13, once again, the uh, Institute for the Study of War um, um, created these uh, new little m- maps that uh, show that right now, um, apparently, Liman is either already liberated or will be very soon. Uh, the same sort of um, could be said about... Uh, Lysychansk, which once again will probably in the next probably week or two this this region most likely will be will be free i'm assuming anyway because right now um what what uh, ukraine has started in this Kharkiv region it seems like it's doing really well they're doing really well and it seems like because russian russian army is really just you know running away like not even looking uh looking back i would i would assume and i would really hope that ukraine continues that that operation to liberate this whole region and going into like donetsk region liberate basically all the territories closer to the russian borders so on and so forth and then they would also continue um continue their uh, counteroffense in Kherson region as well maybe like, like i'm saying maybe like try to split um, Russian forces in two to just show them that they can be actually um, they they there w- there will be consequences and uh, and apparently in this whole region Kherson region or is it it's probably the Zaporozhye region um, 
there are uh, reported Ukrainian partisan warfare. So Ukrainian people who are living on this um, occupied territories, they see what Ukraine is doing and they're thinking, that, okay, this is the time. This is the time where we actually support our, our, our army uh, from the inside and create as much trouble, as much problem, uh, problems to uh, Russian occupants as we as we possibly can, which is exactly what you know what should be doing, what, what they should be doing, if it's not like re- it's like extremely dangerous to their own health, of course. Um, but yeah, in since September thirteenth, that's the la- latest map that we've got. Uh, uh, some counteroffensive operations uh, manu- maneuvers um, have been happening once again in Kherson uh, region. And um, uh, I f- I'm pretty sure Antonovsky Bridge uh, was destroyed. It's not like um, it's not working anymore. Uh, th- there's been like I think one or two more bridges that have been uh, either completely totally destroyed or damaged to the point that uh, it's basically n- non-operational. And um, as far as I remember, um, it was even like a week ago. Uh, Ukraine was about to. Um, about to uh, encircle quite a big, um, quite a big portion of Russian army there. I think they they either tried or successfully did this split into sort of bigger, um, bigger army that that was situated here in Kherson region, and um, instead of sort of being instead of dealing basically with like twenty or twenty five thousand people. By splitting in two, uh, them uh, they would have to deal with like ten thousand people, for example, um, which is obviously a little bit better. But it's it's just incredible to see um, what what Ukraine is doing and uh, how efficiently they're doing it. I don't think I don't think um, I don't think even one high Mars or whatever the the whatever the the same thing f- from. Uh, from UK, uh, I don't think even one of them, um, to 70 or something like that, um, I don't think even one of them was destroyed. I don't think so. So, this, like, literally, quite, okay, it's not quite literally, but definitely in, in the scale of, in, in the same ballpark, that 10, 20 of those high Mars systems are, if not winning the war, but doing so much that they just might as well just be called that they are winning the war. And uh, Deutsche, Deutsche Welle um, post, uh, posted um, a little little tweet about um, what kind of a thing, wh- what kind of things um, are the, the biggest things that countries have um, given to Ukraine. So USA uh, gave 24 HIMARS systems so far. I don't think they all are on the territory of Ukraine? I don't think so, because last time, I think like a week ago, um, people were talking about like 14 of them. So I feel like some, some either on the way or will be delivered. Um, but yeah, United States has been amazing, of course, uh, in this particular case, 14 billion already worth of um, military aid has been given to Ukraine. And once again, this extremely, extremely important high Mars systems, 24 of them. Germany apparently finally um, gave 20 um, Gepard, like cheetahs, um, less than billion dollars, 700 million. Uh, I don't know if they're all already uh, on the territory of Ukraine because with Germany, you never quite know. Did they say and deliver it or did they just say for publicity's sake? And what I've definitely seen is that um, Germany decided against giving Ukraine tanks. I've just seen it like t- two days ago. I think they decisively said that nobody else um, nobody else gave um, tanks to Ukraine and kind of, we don't want to be first, which is such a fucking shitty move. I just can't stand the position of Ukraine officials while, all while, once again, they've basically created this problem by um by putting their own economy on russian gas uh, and consistently doing this in the past 15 years 
And Alan Glenn Merkel w- wouldn't even say that. Oh, it's uh, I, I actually did fuck up. It, no, no, no. In fact, she did say that. No, I don't. I don't feel like I fucked up. Everything is amazing. I mean, <laughs> fucking cunt. Yeah, M M two seventy, uh, UK, um, delivered to um, Ukraine six M two seventy. Um, what is it like vehicles, right? Like let's say, um, and the total. Um, total military aid is more than four billion dollars, which is, once again is is so incredible to actually see how United States and UK for all like for all the problems um w- with those countries for all of the spying on their own people like uh, for all the bullshit with the whatever like election systems and so on and so forth. There's a lot of problems, okay, but in this absolutely incredible, incredibly um dangerous and very very threatening time threatening to ukraine obviously united states and uk have delivered have delivered like i'm I'm just like thinking right like imagine just imagine if these two countries wouldn't exist or 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 would be ra- run right now by a fucking trump for example or something like that and not both countries but united states obviously um uh, Kant who I'm pretty sure said that uh, like yeah I I wouldn't like um, help Ukraine basically imagine just imagine if Ukraine would be left basically with Poland who did support them and that's it like who like support in a way like really they delivered a lot of like Poland delivered like a lot of tanks and um from yeah from like Soviet Union's uh, Union uh, era but it's better than nothing and um just imagine if if ukraine would be would be just with um germany <laughs> fucking whatever italy let's say something like that like it, it, ukraine would be done already by this point there wouldn't be ukraine anymore well, i mean there would be ukraine but it would be like ukraine region of russia and welcome to the russian empire 2.0 ussr ussr 2.0 um so yeah, I'm really really glad that that United States with all of their problems, with all of their bullshit and UK the same. I'm really I really I'm really glad that they exist, let's put it that way, and that they delivered delivered. And yeah, P- uh, Poland has has given to Ukraine more than 200 tanks. Soviet era once again, but and almost like one one point seven billion dollars, almost two billion dollars. Just a contrast to what Germany is doing. Just a contrast. <laughs> and also, um yeah, the the trophies um captured from Russians, forty five tanks, um artillery machines eleven, um seventy eight uh, armored personnel vehicles, forty one trucks, um even even few um what is it like a multiple r- rocket launch systems right um so yeah <laughs> russia also donated quite <laughs> quite a good amount to the to the ukraine and this is obviously just like i don't think this is like the latest updates because latest l- latest that they should be more more than this but pretty remarkable once again uh, i didn't talk about it uh, in the previous episode because it was all about sort of Gorbachev's death and his legacy and so I thought like I have to talk about basically the whole episode just about this um, this counteroffensive um, operation of Ukraine and it's incredible that Zelensky um, once again like arrived in in his room um, just a day after it was um, it was freed and um, it's an, it's just incredible how just incredible also how um how people are how ukrainian um army people ukrainian soldiers are being greeted <laughs> oh my oh my goodness uh how ukrainians um are greeting their own soldiers um it's just like a one little video in in school but um there were a lot of videos i'm pretty sure if you can go to youtube and just uh, tie basically ukraine i don't know like liberated territory something like that uh you can see that uh, ukrainian soldiers are, are driving on like either tanks or like uh, this um but they are right something like that and uh armored 
vehicle uh, machine um armored personnel vehicles um and uh, people are waving people you know like m- greeting them with like ukrainian flags hugging soldiers that you know just strangers that they've never seen and but what it represents is, is the liberation from russian occupation this is so incredible to to see like i i, I kid you not i when i've seen those videos of uh when I've seen those videos of Ukrainian people uh, greeting their own army, I I teared up uh, because because of how much it it represents. Actually, it's incredible, and it's incredible to see the support from from people from their own people. Um, yeah. And uh, what what does Russia do? Like I said, uh, what does Russia, uh, what Russia does in response to it? Uh, basically, just uh, firing at the territory um, of of Ukraine. That's it. And uh, yeah, like I've said, today, um, Ukraine basically said that uh, in Kharkiv region they've already liberated eight and a half thousand square kilometers of territory. Um, and more than fifteen hundred, uh, fifteen, more than one hundred fifty thousand people uh, have been liberated. Uh, more than al- almost four hundred um, little towns, um, villages, and so on and so forth, from sixth of September. So just in a week, basically. Just in a week, just imagine, just in one week. Almost well, not almost. One hundred fifty thousand uh, people are now living not under uh, uh, not under Russian occupation anymore, which is incredible. This is incredible. Almost four hundred uh, towns and, and and cities and villages. So yeah, I really hope that I. This is sort of a, like I said. Um, like I've said, it's going to be a shorter version, um, shorter episode, and it's just about, basically and mostly about the the counteroffensive operation of Ukraine. I really hope that uh, they will continue. I really hope that uh, there will be as little casualties on the Ukrainian part as as humanly possible. Because I feel like in Kherson there will be in Kherson region there would be it would be harder for them. Um, to actually free that territory, and I really hope that I really hope and wish that um, Ukrainian soldiers will not die. To be honest, not nor so- soldiers nor civilians. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna bring you more updates uh, in an, in the next episode. We'll see how the situation will develop. Um, we will see basically what's going to happen um, in the next week because, like I've said, just in one week um, that I didn't do the episode actually talking about the war, so many things have changed that, well, who knows what will happen in the next week uh, because by the time I will record next episode, uh, it might very well be the case that um, Ukraine will have liberated all of the uh, free ter- uh, free the territories up to like Lugansk or Donetsk, for example, who knows? Or maybe even freed Kherson um, from the Russian occupation. Who knows what will happen? But I will try to bring you an update um, in 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 a week time. And um, yeah, if you want to support this channel um, and support this uh, uh, critical discussion thing that I'm doing here, uh, subscribe to YouTube channel. Um, subscribe to Twitch if you if you want to check uh, live um, thing and um, yeah if you can I would really appreciate if you can donate um, because even a couple dollars would actually help um, quite a lot um, so yeah I'll see you hear you in the next um, episode and I hope you're all doing well and uh Yeah. I would just want to say Slava Ukraini. Let's hope that they will free their territories 
very quickly before the winter sets in. Okay, till the next one.